Hallelujah. Amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. I greet you all in the mighty and the most powerful name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. What a beautiful day. Amen. Amen. Some of you at home, you don't even spend as much time as you are spending today. We thank God for that. Amen. We are busy doing life and forgetting about one another. We are too busy. The demands of this life are so much, you know. But we thank God that the church saw it fit that today we must put time aside just to be with each other. Amen. Now, even when you were not talking at home, you are forced to talk to each other today. Amen. Hallelujah. Um, you may be seated in the presence of the Lord. I would like to introduce the servant of God so that time is really not on our side. I want us to just go straight to what the Lord has laid in his heart. Amen. But allow me to appreciate each one of you for taking this time today. Um, our church has so many activities. One After one activity is another. Some of you, you were here last weekend for our worship night, and you are here again on a Saturday. May the Lord reward you. May the Lord strengthen you. Amen. So without any waste of time, Allow me to introduce to you the servant of God who is going to minister to us. Um, I don't even remember when was this. But years ago, I think it's more than 10 years ago, I went to visit, I went to Venda and my younger sister, Pastor Rufuno, was going to Bible school at Calvary Christian Church. And I decided to accompany her and when I was there, then one lecture, uh, lecturer after another, then came this lecturer, and I was sitting there. And as he was ministering, I was so excited. He just ministered to my heart. You know, at Bible school, those of you who have gone to Bible school, uh, usually it's not like a church. But somehow I never regretted going there because that's where I met him for the first time at a close range. I've always seen him far. Amen. So I'm not going to give you all the details, but the man of God who's coming to minister, he's my covenant brother. Amen. Uh, some of you know my other covenant brothers. I've got three. Amen. You know them. So this is the third one. I've got two. Who are they? Reverend Numalo. Dr. Bright, yes. And now this is another covenant brother that God has given me. Amen. He's a senior pastor of Kingdom Tabernacle Center International, and the church is based in Guiani. So the people that you heard them saying, Guiani, Guiani, they are his spiritual children. God called him and anointed him. Are you ready? Is that how you welcome people, RCCI? God called him and anointed him as the preacher way back in 1999 as a local and an international preacher. He's the director and the principal of Kingdom Impact School of Ministry, a Bible school that trains and equips men and women of God for ministry with its 12 campuses across Limpopo. He's the writer of several Christian books and leadership manuals. He has ministered in different platforms across, across Africa, like places, he's been to places like Zimbabwe, Malawi, Swaziland, Swatini, Lesotho, Ghana. He's been to different states of Nigeria, and he has been overseas as well, USA and Germany, just to do ministry. He's 30 years, he has been married for 30 years to his one beautiful wife, who is... Yes, yes, someone told me, I remember someone told me he married... Okay, maybe I'm confusing it, yes. But they wanted to be here. Unfortunately, something came up. 
He's, he's been married for 30 years. He's one of the longest people in marriage. Uh, my Mrs. Tolle, how long have you been married? How long? 31 years. Oh, so no, no, no. You are not the longest married person. The longest married person is Pastor Joyce. Lift up your hands. I mean, come to the front. It's possible. It's doable. Stand there. This woman has been married to the same husband for 30, 35 years. 32 years. Yes, let's appreciate her. She, she works at the church office. Yes, you may be seated. So the pastor has been married for 30 years. The minister of God is coming to minister to us. And they are blessed with three children who are all adults. So they don't have babies in the house. They may be grandchildren in the house. Amen. Church of God, are you all ready? Worshiping team, you are going to give us a song. And the man of God, when he's ready, he's going to come here. And he's coming to speak to our families. As an experienced man, firstly, he has been married for 30 years. Secondly, he's leading a church for many, many years. So he knows. And our prayer today is that may God speak to our marriages. May the Lord reach out to those areas, the wounded areas as well. May the Lord do what he alone can do. And as I was praying and asking the Lord, who do I get? It had to be him. And it was confirmed when I called him, he, when he told me some other things, that was a confirmation to me. I knew it had to be him. So Church of God, are we ready? All right. Uh, we, I think we're we are going to need to pray. And then we're going to sing a song. As soon as it's finished, we're going to pray. Pastor Dumile, you are going to lead us in prayer, and we are all going to join in prayer, and then the man of God is going to come to the, then I can release you. All right? All right. Can we, oh, you're still waiting to know who is coming. <laughs> Sorry, none other than Apostle T.P. Rumati. Let's get a song. Father, we adore you, Father, we adore, Father, we adore you, Father, we
Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, Father, we come before your throne and we, we just want to thank you, Lord, for your presence in this place. And we know you, your presence shall not be in vain. We know, mighty Father God, we shall not leave this place the same. Whatever spirits that are attacking marriages, whatever mindsets that are paid for our marriages, we decree and declare after this day, Things are about to change. Speak to us, oh Father. Speak into our marriages, oh Father. Discipline us when, when we need discipline. Talk to us, mighty Father God, like your children. In the name of Jesus. Fill, mighty Father God, your servant with your presence. Fill him, mighty Father God, with your grace. Fill him, mighty Father God, with your glory. In the name of Jesus. Release, mighty Father God, the presence of God in this house. In the name of Jesus. We decree and declare. Every spirit that is not of God shall be bound in the name of Jesus Christ. Every spirit that is afflicting our marriages, every spirit that is afflicting our families, this day, mighty Father God, we declare it shall be bound. This day, we declare, mighty Father God, it shall not end, mighty Father God, without them living in the name of Jesus. Father God, we pray for a ministry of impartation, impart in our lives, impart in our marriages, impart mighty Father God, your presence, impart mighty Father God, your grace, impart mighty Father God, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, Father God, I pray, touch that family, touch that family, touch that one, touch my family, in the name of Jesus Christ, Shabra Take over, our Take over in our marriages, O God. Take over, take over, take over. We need you, Holy Spirit, right now. To revive our marriages, O God. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' mighty name, we've prayed. And everybody said. Let's be seated in the presence of God. Covenant couples, good evening. Madekwana, Riperile. Um, to my covenant sister, my pastor, my apostle, Pastor Hilda, thank you so much, and also Pastor Mabaya for calling me, also trusting me to come to this spectacular, magnificent um, occasion like this one. You don't know when I'm sitting there, I'm saying it's never, never too late and you are never, never too old to learn. I'm here with people from our church. We are looking, we are admiring because it are among the mothers Hallelujah. And we are truly celebrating every moment of being here. Um, again, thank you so much for the leadership and the organizers of this wonderful, wonderful event. Um, thank you so very, very much. If the marriages are right, the church will be right. Your first church is your wife. In fact, if you are a husband, your, your first member is your wife. If you preach and your wife cannot say amen, go back and pray. The loudest amen 
must come from your wife. So, uh, Paul says, how can you pastor a church if you are failing one member in your house? One member in your house, you are failing. Now you, you, you want, to, want to run a church. Because you see, we've got people who are here everywhere. They are in control. They are influencers. But they can't influence only with this one member in the house. And she's here tonight. Amen. We are so grateful to God. I, I, when I see so many, so many men and so many couples, I said, Lord, truly, truly, this is restoration of order in the church of God. Hallelujah. Pastor SK, my friend, thank you so much. Um, we met not so long, and he has come um, to our church as well. Pastor Hilda, I knew that this one is an error. It must be corrected. How can you have a covenant brother in Eswatini? And he's also my brother and I'm not connected. It was, it was an error. Every year I'm ministering in Eswatini. And the man I'm ministering to when he comes, all the time he said, I'm going to restoration, restoration, restoration. And the restoration one is not coming to Guiana. These two people in SA are going to Eswatini. Thank God the error has been corrected tonight. When she called me, something connected in my spirit. And I knew that this relationship is long overdue. We may not know why, but as we progress, we will know why God is connecting us. Hallelujah. Wow. Um, like they said, I came with people from our church. Pastor Hazel is a covenant daughter and associate pastor. Has been serving under me for many, 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 many years. Amen. If all members who decide to leave the church, I believe this one will not go. There are members who told me, Pastor Hilda, they said, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, <laughs> so, Mara, I, I just believe this one with a fanboy bogey is lawyer. Yeah, I'm telling the truth. Um, this is her son, second born, and her daughter in law, and our intercessor in the church. Amen. What believe my work? They they have come. Uh, our firstborn just got a baby, so I'm a brand new grandfather. So the mother is looking after the daughter. And besides, she took the whole leave for one month to look after the daughter and to give her support. She just went back to work, maybe yesterday or day before yesterday so they, there was no way she could make it to, to come here because the daughter is in the house what I'm trying to say like they said I'm also married to a beautiful lady for 30 years amen 30 years so I was listening to the years you better listen to those who have been there for some time amen to God be the glory um, yeah. look at your wife and say I've never seen you beautiful like this look at your husband or your wife and say hey wow I've never seen you magnificent like this you are you are, you are glowing guys we will talk we will share we will redirect, we will rebuke, we will correct some issues here. The biggest investment you can make is the investment in your own marriage. I'm glad she's here or they are here. Some of the things you will think I was there in your house. I was not there. 
but I stand as a prophet here. I know what is going on there. When I start, you will be laughing and some will be shaking. You say, Manito, Wasitwa. But when it goes on, you will say, Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. A pastor from Ghana was in South Africa in Cape Town. And he said, Many, many male pastors who are pastoring church are struggling because their wives are control freaks, even if they are not called, but they are. They are forcing the church to different directions. And men are unable to control these women. So he said, all men who are afraid, all pastors, not all men, because it was a conference of pastors. So he said, all pastors who are afraid of their wives come forward. So nearly every man who was in the house came. <laughs> so they were standing on his right hand. So he said, pastors or men who are not afraid of their wives come to the left. Only one man came there. All of them, they said, we are afraid. So they won the right. So he started to talk to this one. He said, why are you here? And you are the only one who is on the left. All others, they said, we have problems. He said, even myself, I wanted to go there, but she said, go there. <laughs> So the case is still the same. <laughs> Hallelujah. Father, time has so much been invested for this occasion. Money has been invested as well. These your people are very, very busy. But they have taken and set apart, Lord, this time that we must come as covenant couples and deal with issues within among ourselves so that Heavenly Father, we can have better homes for our babies and our children. Holy Spirit, you have never, never abandoned me in a platform. Whenever I stood, you stood by my side. You lifted my spirit. You articulated through my thoughts and through my mind. Let the same thing happen here, Lord. May I speak like one of the oracles of God. That is, I speak, Lord, let their hearts be convicted. Let issues be corrected. Father, I pray for a turnaround. I pray for permanence in the couples that are seated here tonight. May the Holy Spirit help us. When people no longer believe in marriage, when demons and forces are destroying our marriages, Lord, may we save those that are here tonight. If this one will leave, our children will also survive. Some of them, they look at us, they no longer love marriage because of us, Lord. But I pray in the name of Jesus that may we uphold this great institution that you've given to mankind. And thank you, Father, in advance for anointing me and helping me to talk, to preach, to, to edify, and also to prophesy. In the name of Jesus, the one who rose from the dead, soak me in your anointing and in the blood of the Lamb. In Jesus' name. And everybody said? Well, I was dealing with my spirit so much to say covenant couples. Lord, direct my thoughts and my mind on what to share on Saturday so many many things were battling around my spirit and I can't get it right but I seek God I said Lord direct it well even if it will be a new concept I will try my best to deal and to teach and to preach Amen. and the Lord told me this thing and I will be sharing some few things around it talking about a family altar it may be a different case but just allow me to build my case on that one. A marriage or a family altar. Everybody say a family altar. I know in meetings like this, people have got different expectations and teachings that they want. But allow me to take this dimension of altars. Why? Because marriage is more spiritual 
than physical. Even if we correct the physical domain, the influence, the power of the influence is not on the physical, it's in the spiritual. So if we correct the spiritual domain, I'm telling you, ladies and gentlemen, our marriages will leave. Your amen is too, it's too, it's too, it's too low. A family altar. An altar is a raised place of sacrifice and a power point, a source to draw spiritual and supernatural strength. Even if you are not writing, but I want you to pick some words from the definition that I got, the, the best de definition I got about the altar. Number one is a raised place. Hello? A raised place of sacrifice and worship. Number two is a power point. Number three, it's a source where we draw spiritual and supernatural strength. Ladies and gentlemen, the Bible teaches us that what we see in the book of Hebrews was created from what we don't see. Are you following me? It means there is a seen world and also an unseen world. Normally we concentrate on what we see. But the Bible says what we see is the product of what we don't see. The unseen world, it's more powerful than the seen world. Because the unseen world controls the seen world. Hallelujah. It controls the seen world. So the definition says, an altar is a power point where we draw spiritual strength. So an altar is the source of power. People go to the altar to do what? To draw spiritual stamina. To draw spiritual power. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. This is what the Philistines couldn't understand. When they saw a man called Samson, ordinary as he was, but doing supernatural things, all they wanted to know was the power and the source of his power. Hallelujah. The problem is not the smiles and the kisses. It's the source of the happiness of this marriage. Where are you drawing your power from? Because if it's only on the face level, my friend, demons know that everything in the physical is controlled in the spirit. So they will enter the spiritual realm. Where is the control center of everything we do in the super, in the physical? So they said, what's wrong with Samson? Now look. When Samson saw Delilah, he didn't know that behind Delilah there was a meeting of rulers. All he saw is a beautiful lady. But behind that beautiful lady, there was, or there were altars. There were rulers. There were people who said, we will never rest until we arrest that man. My friend, when you succeed in your life and in your marriage, don't undermine altars. Many, many people, when God lifts us up, when God blesses us, we start to concentrate on us rather than the source of what we have. One man, loko moholo ugonya gonyisa na aletare ya we. Loko shiko mshiku kateki sa hi lovo la wana wa wena tekiwa. Raise the altar. When you buy a car, raise an altar. When you open an office, raise an altar. Paul says, a bigger door has been opened for me, but many are those who oppose me. The bigger the door, 
the more the opposition. Africa, we celebrate much and forget about all this. When I'm preaching in Ghana, I see people bringing cows. I, I see people bringing goats. I see people bringing things. I say, Pastor, what is this? They said, for every blessing that entered their family, they raise an altar. I mean, they raise an altar. So, we, when God blesses us, we celebrate the whole night and forget about the altars. There is a wedding, my friend. You are, you are about to get married. Everybody is busy. The caterers, the music, the decorators. Where is the altar? People who are saying, though we are not on the space, but we are kneeling down, that this marriage of our son and our daughter will never, never fade. Ask somebody next to you, are you hearing this man? Bible says, the day the Philistines arrested Samson, they made a big festival to celebrate their God, Dagon, that he has handed the enemy into their hands. They don't thank Delilah. Aye. They thank Dagon. <laughs> Behind Delilah, that was the goal. So the battle was not won by Delilah. It was won in the altar. So that's why they raised a sacrifice to celebrate the God. They said you have handed your enemy, our enemy, to our hands. Hallelujah. Nere hallelujah. Yeah. Yeah. So that was what was happening. What I'm trying to say, our marriages are fixed in the altar, but they are also destroyed. Altar. Loko si odiwa aleta reini, stalungi siwa aleta reini wanamani. Hallelujah. Bring you so much love each other. Today is too cold. We can't even go to the church, baby. Let's spend the whole day cuddling each other in the blankets. Yenda! This money is too much. You see that church now? You see that church now? The way they are demanding money now, we'll never do, have anything in our house. Yenda! Do you know that wherever you are, it was because of that particular altar you are talking about? If it was, it was prayer that brought you there, if it was tithes and offerings and sacrifices that brought you there, why now do you want to stop because you are married? You think the devil is taking a break? You think the devil is on leave? Hey. Let's deal with this matter. 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 Amen. Amen. Satan ladies and gentlemen, is destroying marriage every day. Why? The Bible says, if foundations are shaken, what will a righteous man do? Uh, I'm telling you, you will never ever make it in life. Family is a foundation. Everything starts at the family. Before you fix politicians, before you fix waters, before you fix your company, fix this thing that is called marriage. Because it's a foundation. I've seen big guys who are politicians, they talk a lot of things, but they don't even have wives themselves. Hey, it's amazing. Because the divorce is so rife, I had a man, I was connecting a marriage somewhere, so I heard this thing, they said, they want to reconsider that marriage must become a contract. So let's make it a contract. <laughs> oh, my God. Hey, hey, so it maybe it's, it's just a proposal, a, a contract. To re, uh, we are married for five years, so after five years, we'll check whether we are still okay, and we renew the contract. After 10 years. <laughs> if marriage was to be renewed, 
do you think you, that woman would still want to renew that contract with you? Or that man would still renew that contract with you? So Jesus, when he was, when he was cross-questioned about divorce, they said, hey, this man, uh, this man uh, was married, the brother died. Uh, one, two, three, the brother died. The, the, the brother died. The brother. So in heaven, who is going to marry this woman? So Jesus says, in, in heaven, we, there will be no marriage. We'll live like angels. But if there was marriages among the five brothers, and they were all your husbands, do you think you will still, if in heaven, we are given chance to marry again, to say, go to the same one or choose another one if you are tired? Hey, 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 hey. I'm saying, if in heaven we are going to be married again, and they will be giving you a chance to change your mind, will you still go to the same guy? I say, hey God, thank God. Oh, thank God. <laughs> thank God. The statistics is alarming, friends. 25,000 marriages end up in divorce in South Africa every year. So if you are here and you are in a, in a marriage and you are not part of that statistics, we better be serious. There is an enemy and demonic forces and powers that are after your marriage. You are not part of the statistics. Thank you for that. Amen. Amen again. Many men who divorce, they divorce from the age of 45. So if you pass uh, 45, you have survived and you are surviving. I mean in age, not in marriage. They said the biggest divorce rate is between people who are married be between 5 years and 10 years. That is where many, many divorces are. They said the biggest rate of divorce is between 5 and 10 years. Yeah? That's where the, the divorce is. Amen. You don't ask me. We, don't, we no longer have many, many problems. If she doesn't cook, we cook ourselves. If she does not iron, we will iron ourselves. Oh yes. If she doesn't polish the shoes, we shall do it ourselves. So you are fighting for food. We are no longer fighting for those things. Ah, no, 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 no. No, 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 no. Amen. Amen. That's you know why? When people go up in marriage, they start to fo focus on each other and focus things. God is no longer the center of their marriage. You know, if all two of you, your focus is God and God alone. When you are doing that, God himself will be bringing you together every day. Bring, but when you chase money, you chase business, you chase politics in the place of God, the same things will you, you are chasing will help you to run away or to draw away from your partner. May God become the center of your marriage. May God, even no matter, no matter when gold is rising, may God remain in his position in your marriage in the name of Jesus. Right, right. I'll rush a little bit because we don't have much time. May we read Genesis 25, verse 5 and 6. Genesis 25, verse 5 and 6. Somebody read for me on the INIV version. Genesis chapter number 25. 25. NI, NIV. Yeah. And read 5 and 6. Verse number 5. Abraham left 
everything he owned to Isaac. But while he was still living, he gave gifts to the sons of his concubines and sent them away from his son Isaac to the land of the east. Can you read it again, my brother? Genesis chapter 25, verse number 5. Abraham left everything he owned to Isaac. But while he was still living, he gave gifts to the sons of his concubines and sent them away from his son Isaac to the land of the east. Let me break it down for you. Yeah. I want you to understand the scenario of what is going on here. Abraham had got sons from his concubines. He calls them and he gave them gifts. Gave them things. I don't know how, what he was giving them, but I believe he was giving them animals, monies, properties and everything. Everybody was overloaded and they left him. Now it comes to his covenant son. The Bible says he gave him all or he gave him everything. Everybody say everything. Others are carrying things, but Isaac receives all. Hallelujah. I went to Israel many times, and I sit with these great scholars. I said, help me. What did Isaac receive? Because it's not specific. It just say all. What did he receive? Others, it is specified gifts, things, properties, whatever, inheritance, but Isaac all. What did Isaac receive? They said, the real, real thing of the matter, Isaac received nothing. They said what the old man did. He said, my son kneeled down. Kneel down. He knelt. He said, I release all. <laughs> Iris, I release the spirit of all to you. One, give, take, take, take. This one, I give you my spirit. Go. When he entered, um, chapter 26, when he entered where? Gerar. When he entered Gerar in chapter 26, he was literally empty-handed. They saw a guy who is coming with his wife. No animals, no nothing. He just come. They don't know. He's carrying the spirit of all. No money, no nothing. But carrying what? Flesh. <sighs> was carrying the spiritual DNA from his father. Others received animals or cattle. I just give examples or camels. But he was given the spirit of cattle. Spirit of business. Spirit of altars. Spirit. Spirit of prosperity. Now, the Bible says, the blessing of the Lord maketh one rich. Not the blessings, uh -uh, the blessing. So the blessing is a spirit, but blessings are material. So it is the blessing that give birth to blessings. If you hear me say, I hear you, Apostle. Blessing is a spirit. You don't see it. But it gives birth to what? To blessings. Don't you know old men who died, they left buses to their sons. Baba Sierra's guy, they left cattle. Two years, everything is dead. Everything is gone. Why? They have properties, but they don't have the spirit that the old man was having to raise whatever he had. Do you know what I'm talking about? Every shop is closed, but the old man who never went to school was running everything. But a son who went to the university... Everything is closed in one year. 
a Jew boy will come all the way from his land to South Africa only carrying a briefcase. Within 10 years, he will be owning properties in South Africa. So he comes empty-handed but carrying the spirit. My God. Now, we carry things from our parents. Just because we come from their bloodline, we carry things. The woman you have married is carrying things. The man you are married to is carrying things. From where? From his father. When you go home, because I knew you are fighting things that you didn't know. So, no, 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 so now you are fighting a man you don't know you are fighting a spirit that he carries from his dead in Africa, we have no way out. All of us, we are dedicated to some altars as long as you're an African. That's why I don't understand you. When we say come to for prayer, you don't come. You come, you pray like a white man. Are you a white man? We are carrying things. We need deliverance. We need to be delivered. These women are crying for a man who is an intercessor, who is a pastor in the church, but he's carrying things. Carrying things. The reason why Christian women die is because no one will understand their case. This man is anointed, but at home she's crying, and no one can understand their case. Even if she shares it, everybody will say, No, no, he's he went. Nah. That guy is a good guy. We know him. He's a sweet man. What are you talking about? Leave, um, leave the man of God alone. You demon. <laughs> Look at your neighbor. I'm also carrying my things. <laughs> Not your neighbor, your wife or your husband. I need help. I'm carrying my things. Don't joke with spiritual things. <laughs> he laid hands upon Isaac. He said, I give you all. Especially women. Women want to be laid hands everywhere where they go. Say something, man of God. Prophesy. <laughs> Prophesy to me, man of God. Google me, Google me. Google me, man of God. <laughs> Google me, man of God. Say something to my life. Listen, Peter said, silver and gold, I don't have, but I have something, and this something that I have, I will release. That man of God, una deliverance, una healing, Mara, he has something that you don't know. Healing you will receive, plus something that you don't know. 
this man is followed by the demons of divorce. Now because you are vulnerable, because you are miserable, you lift up your hands. Yes, you shall be healed. But you are also receiving the demons of divorce that is following this pastor. Women, may you stay in your church. May you stay under your pastor. Paul says, you know me. You know my doctrine. You know my grace. You know where I come from. Receive this gospel that I preach to you. But I'm afraid, pastor. It's funerals. It is during their funerals you will know how many pastors they have, these people. I'm telling you. Because there is this one, the Sunday one. But there are other pastors that we don't know who are ministering to our members. And they will come during the funeral. She, she was also my member. She comes on Wednesday. Hey, we, we, we have got power night. We, we have got America, liquid fire night. She, 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 she was the daily uh, program director. So we are also involved in this funeral. Do you know, when Abraham was releasing, he was releasing wealth, power, altars. But he was also, somebody say also, transmitting the spirit of lies to his son. Genesis 21, 20 verse 1, Abraham the father was lying. The same demon was upon his son. Genesis 15, Abraham is weeping and crying because Sarah, and Sarah, his wife, is a barren. The same demon of barrenness is following his son, Isaac. So it was not only the transmitting of wealth. It was wealth plus. Are you following me? Are you following me? Read, Pastor. Genesis 24. Because that is where my story lies. I'm going to break everything under that one context. And then we shall, we, shall, we shall take leave from these things. Genesis 24, 62 to 67. Do the same in IV. Verse number. Six zero. Chapter 24, 6, 2 to 6, 7. 6, 2 to 6, 7. I'm reading from the NIV. Yeah. Now, Isaac had come from Bielahai Roy. Bielahai Roy. Yes. Roy. Uh -huh. For he was living in the Negev. All right. He went out to the field one evening to meditate. He went to the field to do what? Meditate. To meditate. We shall come back later. Yeah. And as he, he looked up, uh -huh. he saw camels approaching. Another translation said, when he lifted his eyes, he saw what? Camels, right? Uh, where am I? Sorry. Rebecca also looked up and saw Isaac. Come on. Isaac lifted his eyes and saw something. The same Rebecca who does not even know this guy. She lifted her eyes and saw Isaac. No one has officially introduced Isaac to Rebecca, but she discovered him in the spirit. Oh my God! My God. Okay, bring it. She got down from a camel. Who told her to come down of a camel? Something within her to say, even if I don't know this guy, but something in me said, the camel I've been riding for 25 years is time to alight and come down. The reason why it's so when I swing a family when all I could see is that camel is away. You tell me why? No, no, no. The current of the era when we're not going to have that camel is here. Amen. I'm going to see what You will come down of that camel. She got down from a camel and, then, and asked the servant, yeah. who is that man in the field coming to meet us? Uh -huh. He is my master, the servant answered. 
so After that what did she do so she took her veil and covered herself wow then the servant told isaac all he had done isaac brought her into the tent of his mother sarah mm. and he married rebecca so she became his wife and loved her and isaac was comforted after his mother's death yo okay stay there bring me now you go to chapter 25 and read 20 and 21 chapter 25 you read verse 20 to 21 verse number 20 uh -huh. and isaac was 40 years old when he when married when he got married how old was he 40 all right when he married Rebekah, daughter of Beth Bethuel, uh -huh. the Aramean from Padan Aram, uh -huh. and sister of Laban, the Aramean, uh -huh. Isaac prayed to the Lord. Listen! Isaac did what? Prayed. To prayed! Build an altar! Break the altar of barrenness to his wife. Listen. Abraham married when he was 40, 40 years old. And the first twins, children, they arrived after 20 years. So uh, Isaac had children when he was 60. When he married, he was 40. 20 years, he was praying yes. for his wife to conceive. She, he didn't take her to the prophets. He didn't take her to, to, to Zambia. He knelt down and raised a new altar for his wife. And after 20 years, she conceived. Whatever was closed in your marriage by the reason of anointing and by the reason of grace, whosoever was stopping it will lose them. And that thing must come to pass. Thank you, Jesus. Your things are there, but they are blocked in the spirit. It is the altar that will lose it. And it will come to pass. Amen. My story will be revolving day. And the last one, it was uh, chapter 26 now, from 6 to 10. Chapter 26 from 6 to 10. Now you, re you remember when Isaac received all, he was, he was also receiving the spirit of what? Of barrenness. Are we together? Yeah. How, how can the father be, how can the father fail or, or the Rebecca become a parent and also how can Sarah become a parent and also here Rebecca is also affected by the same case then 26 verse 6 to 10 chapter 26 verse 6 to 10 so Isaac stayed in Gerar when the man of that place asked him about his wife he said she is my sister because he was afraid to say she is my wife. He thought, the man of this place might kill me on account of Rebecca because she is beautiful. When Isaac had been there a long time, Abimelech, king of the Philistines, looked down from a window and saw Isaac caressing his wife, Rebecca. So Abimelech summoned Isaac and said, she is really your wife. Why did you say she is my sister? Isaac answered him, Because I thought I might lose my life on account of her. Then Abimelech said, What is this you have done to us? One of the men might have slept with your wife, and you would have brought guilt upon Let's us. Let's leave it there. You, you will finish at home. See, when, when, when apostles read verses, don't, don't just say, I, I know it. I know it. I know, I know it. Don't say those things. Sometimes when your pastor is here, even if they're opening the verse that you know, be patient to hear the spirit that accompanies that verse on that particular Sunday. Are you hearing what I'm saying? We, we are dealing with altars that destroys and kills our marriages. And if we only want a letter in, we are saying, ladies and gentlemen, let's raise altars to fight these things because they are spiritual. The Bible in Song of Solomon 2 verse 15 talks about little foxes. Little foxes that are 
eating the vine of the marriage. Demonic powers, spiritual things that are eating the, the, the blossoming of the vine of our, our marriages. They are common ten things that are causes of divorces in our country and even in our churches. I want you to write them down, all these ten things quickly. If I'm mentioning things that you know, I've seen signs and symptoms of the existence of this thing in my marriage, let's deal with it before we leave this house. Amen. If you find Uri, I never write, come on, you can't write, 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 the number one cause of divorce in the church and also outside the church is infidelity or the spirit of infidelity and unfaithfulness. Bomfa. I said what? Infidelity and unfaithfulness. Number two, financial depression. Many, many people, they say money is the root of all evil. Lack of money is the root of all evil. Do you know? Pastor Hilda, but funzi basho bori funza bori risha ambisi wakare. I will tend to root and get to the bottom. Funo dika the humble and dika the rabe. Now we sakora bela mara dika tomando rabe. But when Rebecca saw the caravans, when Isaac's people has arrived. Oh, what was it called? Caesarius. Ah, Rebecca ran a table. I thought they have a bit. No, these guys loaded. So what are we praying for? Because money is here. So they said, can't you stay for two weeks? Said, Staying for what? Staying for what? God has fulfilled my journey. Leave me alone. I want to go with this guy. Why? The guy was loaded. My God. Finances. Finances. It was number what? Another cause. A major one. Sexual incompatibility. Sexual incompatibility. People become so tired. Lack of sexual satisfaction or poor intimacy also causes these issues of divorce. Amen. The Bible says when two lie together, they will keep each other warm. They sleep in the guest room. So my question is, what do you do? Do you write a letter or you just come back? How do you come back when we fight and you, you relocate to the guest room? How do you come back? Every problem you know, I will fix him. Don't worry, I will fix him. You know where you are going to fix us. I won't give it to him. The woman of Shunema, he saw that the pastor is hungry. He's anointed. He's a preacher. But when he passed here, I can see that that guy is hungry. 
Nishumwe andara ikagara. Even if you don't talk venda, say this. Kabari mishumwe andara ikagara. When your husband is hungry, other colleagues will know that this guy is hungry. They will know it. They will see it with this guy. Ah, he's going up and down, he's working, but this guy is hungry. All right. Number. Addiction. Now, I, I give some few examples of this addiction. Addiction to substance. Things that you eat or you drink. Or addiction to pornography. Or addiction to social media. Or addiction to gambling. You are in the church, but you are addicted. One of my members, he came to report a case. I said, why is your woman hitting you like this? I said, I don't know. So I said, okay, don't worry. I want to call when hey, this woman is calling. Hitting a man of God with, with, a, with a laptop. She said, he was supposed to tell me that he's married to a laptop before I came to his house. This guy is on his laptop from until 11, 12 or one. Every day I'm waiting, he's in the laptop. So I took it and I hit him well here and he was paralyzed, but I know he, I registered my point. You're always on your phone. You're always watching boxing in the night. The poor woman is waiting. You are watching where I just walk. The poor woman who's got that she corner the panda panda. It's like you don't even see her. She, she, look, look at this. Look, look, look at this guy. Look at this guy. She's not interested. You are addicted to these things. Always chatting, always on Facebook, always on WhatsApp. You women. You women. No, when, when we are watching TV, you are always on your phone. Even in the bedroom, the guy is busy and you are busy on your phone. Mishipe zanarebo feza. Asukora izo zitu. This is addiction and it's killing us. Pastor, I made a law in our house. I said, no one watches or holds the phone when we are in the sitting room. Let's watch TV together. If you want to concentrate on the phone, go back to your room. We are no longer even communicating because everybody's on the phone. No communication on WhatsApp. I don't even know in the middle of the night, people are online. What time do you sleep? Ask your neighbor, what time do you sleep? You are addicted, my friend. This woman, pastor, she, she, she works in Houting. She comes only during leave and off. She said, pastor, help me. Even when I'm around, this man is on his iPad. I don't even know what he's doing there. I will sleep and wait. He will never arrive. He's busy. Addicted. I'm tired. Men love to watch pornography. I'm talking about Christian men. Women, they don't have a much problem. But men, we are sexual slaves. It doesn't start with us. When David was on top of the house, what he was watching that day was a pornography. A woman bathing. Yeah. That's why in the garages where they sell cars, they just put a naked woman. You will find us, all of us, hey, 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 hey. My, my, my principal one day, Pastor SK, he, he found um, children watching a pornographic material on a book. So it was taken, it was brought to the office. So the principal called me, he said, Pastor Lumadi, look what the children are watching. It's a big book. So I said, you, 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 by, by looking at the book, I know this is pornography. So the principal said, hey, this is what our children are watching. So I thought he would just say, it's pornography, look, and then he put the book away. 
He said, come, come, come on, the minister says, come on. Come on, the woman, come on, the demean, yes, come on. Come on, come on, the demean, yes. Then I, 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 Similar number five is also social networking. I'm canceling a marriage. Now I said, you, you, you see, I have never seen a woman like this. Where did you get it? He said, I got him from the Facebook. I said, hey, you, 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 that's why you, you, got, you got it from the Facebook. You, you don't know anything about it. Said, no, 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 no. We just chatted, chatted and, and met on, on the Facebook. Amen. This demon has entered the church. We are crying for our sons and daughters. Parents who are here, if you don't pray like Isaac, you will see what your children will bring to your house as a wife or as a husband. Your son will bring a man with rings everywhere in his body. I Lina ringi kalito kaningo karuli mi kam kombo na ninge iho tindi ringi viz. Are this is my man, this is my person. Akisi wa panda abo ba do fe intabo ni nko ba uzi. Be peace to God. Where do they get these things from? From social medias and networking. Amen. Our church people have lost money because of opportunities that are coming through social media. Social media has potential to destroy pastors in the church. My neighbor, uh, she said one of the friends came with a newspaper. I don't know whether it's a newspaper or an, or an article in the front. She said, you, 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 why didn't you tell me? Look at your pastor. I didn't know this happened. She said, that time, mama... My, my friend was drinking tea and scones. So the moment she brought a, a thing, an article of my church and my pastor, I don't want you anymore. I don't know my pastor by social media. I know my pastor by revelation. You are bringing this article now. Where were you when I was a nobody in this world? That man found me when I was zero. That man married me. That man dedicated me. So many of our Christians, they understand and believe everything in the social media. The reason why they are no longer tithing is because of what they saw in the social media. Other retired and other backslidden pastors are attacking tithe. A person or a Christian from this restoration church, are I mean, I'm no longer tithing because of what I read in the article. You are not following Christ by revelation. You are following Christ by social media. Shame on you. Amen. They were there. There was a man from Polokwane in our church. He said, You can't talk rubbish and nonsense about my pastor in my presence. Never! I won't allow that. I don't know this man through social media. I know him by revelation. Number abuse, emotional, social, psychological, and physical abuse. Many, many, many men in the church are abused. Mara, we don't see it because we're in the church. Many women, you see them smiling here. I'm telling you, inside they are wounded. Do you understand what I'm talking about? You don't know what is behind the smiles you see. You, you don't know. So, so, so they, they, they are shielding inner pain that nobody can understand. Christians know how to abuse internally, whereby nobody will ever know. They will come and pretend, hey, do a selfie, we are doing that. But the woman said, I wish they know those. I wish they know this guy. They are wounded inside, I'm telling you. They are abused and they have no way to report it. 
I'm telling you, we are losing sisters. We are losing powerful women of God because they are bleeding internally by the pains they are going through in their marriages. By a man who said, I'm a Christian. A man who said, I love you. Now he has changed colors. Some, their salaries are taken. Some are beaten. They don't way to beat. They beat anywhere where you will never, never see. So in the face, there is a makeup matter. They are being beaten. Yeah. Yeah. I'm telling you. Their sisters are taken as wives. Yeah. I'm telling you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So these things, when they build up, they force or they cause divorces. Number communication breakdown. I'll talk a little bit about it later. Communication breakdown. Another one, number eight, long distance relationship. When a man now has been transferred to Cape Town, transferred, you have never, ever been transferred like that. Cape Town, very, very close. Now there is a challenge. My problem is one, these people who are not yet married, they're always together. They don't want to separate. And we pass our saying, separate, man. We are afraid, man. We are afraid of untimed bombs, man. Things, please, please keep a space. They say, no way. The way we love each other, we cannot. So after marriage, we said, now, even if you want to carry each other on your back, you can carry every day. Stay together like that. They no longer want to be together. But before they marry, they want to be together. My wife works at the police station. During COVID, there were more abuse and fights and divorces than when there was no COVID. Why? COVID hibernated us and detained us in our houses. So we are not used to these things. To be with this woman the whole day. This one, Pastor, this one. I can't even breathe. <laughs> I want to phone my people. I don't even know where to call because she's always there. So during those few days, it was too much pressure on families because they don't want to become to they want they don't want to stay together. Amen. I said what? That was number eight. Then number nine, mental health. Mental health. Talking about depression, anxiety, and many, many mental and psychological issues. And number last, drifting, drifting apart because of lack of compa compatib it's what? compatibility. People are drifting. But what are here? Drifting apart. Now, after saying all these things, I will say, when God started marriage, ne? When God started marriage, he wanted to address four issues. And after that, I will go back to Isaac and I will close it there. God, number one, he wanted to solve the problem of loneliness. When God instituted marriage, he wanted to solve the problem of what? Loneliness. That is in Genesis 2, chapter 8, verse 18. Number two, God was providing a helpmate, a helper to the man. He was providing a helpmate. Number three, God wanted that there must be no fornication. First Corinthians 7, it says, to avoid fornication, a man must be married to his own wife. And number four, God's plan was reprocreation in order to bring forth offspring. Now I want to enter the issue of Isaac and I will close it there because of time. Are we still together? Give him some more few minutes and then I, I deal with it. I will deal maybe with seven or six thing, uh, seven or eight things and I'm done. From the verses that we were reading about Isaac. Number one. When Rebecca arrived, the Bible say Isaac was busy meditating. Hello. Meditating means Isaac was praying. What was he praying about? Praying for an unknown woman that the people have gone to hunt for him. Lord, bring me a helpmate. 
bring me a soulmate, somebody that will help me to reach my destiny, somebody that will help me not to be separated from you. Give me somebody who will be a shock absorber to this difficult life. Give me somebody who will be who 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 will help me to build an order. He was praying. Now my question is, where are the praying men today in the church and in our marriages? But we are not going to be I don't have to prophesy. Call prayers and tell me which percentage was higher. God, when he raised men, he wanted a pastor over his wife and children. Somebody who will preach and prophesy and pray for his family. Now the man is absent. January when we are praying here, it's only wives and children who are praying. I know we will eat after the prayer. We are only we are only cooking for daddy. marriage of Isaac, it was all about altars. Let the altar keep your marriage going. Listen. Elias, when he arrived in the land where he wanted to marry a, a wife for Isaac, the Bible says when he arrived, there were so many beautiful women. He knelt down and started to pray. Lord, there are so many. Me, a woman who qualifies to be Isaac's wife. Amen. He did not go to the Facebook. He knelt down. Whosoever finds a wife finds a favor from the Lord. If you started wrongly, but you can continue right through the altar of prayer. Oh yes. Eliezer was praying. So our children are looking at the hairstyle, looking at the figure, looking at the high heels, they are looking at the colors, looking at those things, electing the spiritual. So if our sons and, and, and daughters are not praying, may we pray for our sons and daughters. If your son is growing, please, he's in UJ now. He's in Cape Town. Pray that every wrong relationship, I counsel it in the spirit. Every wrong connection, I counsel it in the spirit. Give my son a, a man, a woman who will help him to love God. They don't pray. Let's pray for our children. Prayer is a spiritual thing. It's a spiritual force. When we are watching TV, nobody's sleeping. When we are watching a soapy, nobody's sleeping. When we are talking, nobody's sleeping. On their phones, nobody's talking. But let's pray. Everybody's slumbering. Come on. It's a spiritual thing. If you are busy, you will be working the whole day without eating. Because you are too busy. You won't even feel hunger. But if you say tomorrow I'm fasting, you will feel hunger 3 o'clock in the morning. Because now it's a spiritual exercise. Satan will oppose everything that connects your spirit. My friend, you are not busy. Satan is separating you from altars. You only read the Bible together with the pastor on Sunday. You, you as a family, you don't even have a Bible study. If I, op I say now, open the book of Obadiah. You and your wife, open Obadiah. You and your wife open Obadiah. It will be a war. Hey, 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 darling. Ileka New or Ileka Old Testament. But I call up a Is it there? Why? Because there are no spiritual altars anymore. So if it is hard for us, what about our children? What about our children? If we are lazy to pray, what will happen to our children? 
A happy family makes a happy church. If you want to pray for a long time, when you come to church, I'm in charge here. When you are praying, the time is up, I said, ho, ho, I want to preach. So some people, even when they say, stop, they don't want to stop because they don't pray at home. They want to pray here. So I say, stop. Ra, 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 ra. Hey, stop your nonsense and stop. I'm in charge here. Ra, 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 ra. Instead of going out to watch soccer, to watch beauty contest, take time, man. Take time to go to and attend conferences. Take Time and sit down and hear other people. Take time to teach each other the word of God. You are building a family altar. Pastor Hilda, there was a case in the office. So she said, Pastor, when we pray this man, it's not loud. He prays softly. Children are praying. We are praying. But this guy, so is that, I said, is that a prayer? He said, yeah. I tell him to pray loudly. Abraham, no, no, Isaac was busy what? meditating. So when, when his wife cannot bring give birth, what does he do? He prays for his what? For his wife. To say, Lord, you gave me. Open her womb, Lord. Touch her, Lord. Can you allow your husband to lay hands on you? Even if he does it, my you. you. Isaac prayed for his wife. Prayed for his wife. Number two. Look at this. Number two. I'm finishing. Don't worry. Number two. When, when Rebecca was coming with the protocol, she saw a man. She does not know him. But something inside her told her, calm down. So she came down. So after coming down, she asked people, who is this guy? Look, on Who is this guy? But here is the one. After that, she covered her face. Women, let me tell you honestly. Every man, I don't even talk about any color, any normal man, he wants a woman who comes down here, come in to enjoy marriage. Every, every dog in South Africa, I'm talking about South Africa, if you say food sick, it will go. Even if, if it has never had that word, but when you say food sick, it reacts. So it means there is commonality. This year, no sorry, food sick, I must go. So every man, when he sees his Coming down the camel, they react. Don't, don't talk to me to say, Wanga Dini, we are Dina, was told there is Lazutu. Your problem, your salary is bigger than his. So, this is the camel that you are because you know you are, you are carrying the weight of the budget. So, you can't come down with that camel because you are carrying the financial power of this house. The house what you inherited from your father. You, 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 your post where you work. Men are kneeling in front of you. Let them kneel. But when you come back home, come down. Your camel. This is a man who married you. He wants you not only to respect but you to submit. Sisters, is that difficult? You are winning status but you are losing that guy. And he will go to a woman who is not educated, who stays in an RDP house because she, 
she can come down her camel and make him a man in his own house. All men who come to my office, pastor, tell her to respect me. Tell her how to talk to me in front of the children. Tell her how to communicate. She does not respect me. All men are crying the same cry. Women don't want to come down their cameras. They are carrying status. Carrying status. Your family is falling apart. Now that man, he no longer talks anything. He just be quiet. Because he knows if he is, he will be arrested. So just like a, like a dead man. Do, do you enjoy that thing? Do, do you enjoy that guy? Who is just like that? Your brothers are coming to collect money. He says nothing. People are coming to fix the house. He says nothing. People are coming to collect money. He says nothing. Somebody come and collect a car. Nobody tells him nothing. He said nobody. In fact, I'm paying all these things. But you tell she says, I know what you say. not the I'm What you tell me In my life, Pastor Hilda, I've never seen a woman like Sarah. Sarah, the wife to Abraham. Hello? Sarah Ajiam Shumino Vastensi. She cleaned her hagar and she took her into her bedroom. She closed the door and left. How many women can do that? Take a slave woman because she can't give birth for her husband. Take her and said, Mwanang, help me. As long as this man must have a name. Make a baby for my man. She takes her into the bedroom, closed the door, and left. All the women, I no longer trust them. The way they are looking at me, I know, yeah. They said, they said, don't even go there. <laughs> don't, don't, don't even try that. One, two, three. Hagar is. I said, Hagar is what? Bibiri Atomotong. Ukotongera in her mistress. The woman who took her to her bedroom. Now she said, You, you don't understand these things. I, I don't eat anything. You, 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 your problem, you don't understand these things. You have never gone through what I'm going through. Allow me to have some rest. So Sarah said, I'm going to take my position back. This slave girl, I made her a person. Now look what she's doing in my house. Some of the things in the church, we are not being funny, we are not being rough. We want to take back the position that you know that I'm in charge here. So when she does that, she ran away. Aga ran away. Listen, she was roadblocked by an angel. An angel said, Haga, slave of Sarah, where are you going? She doesn't say Haga. She rem the angel reminds her where she comes from. Her God, slave of Sarah, where are you going? Say, hey, hey that woman, you don't know that woman. Ah, that woman is not what you see. Ah, that woman is cruel, it's dangerous. Oh, that, that, that woman I don't trust anymore. The angel said, Haga, whatever you have is because of that woman. Go back and submit. Everybody say submit. Go back and submit to her. Whatever you carry is because of that woman. And if you want to sustain what you have, stay there. Go back. Go back. Hallelujah. Number three, I told you, she lifted her eyes and Isaac lifted his eyes. And when she saw Isaac, she came down. In marriage, we need to know our partners in the spirit. But our problem, when God looks at us, he looks at us through the eyes of potential. Am I talking? But when you look at me, you look at me on my 
faith on what or I am, on who I am. But when God looks at me, he does not look at me like that. He says, this is a work in progress. Though she's poor, though she's poor, she's poor now, you don't know what tomorrow holds. That woman you don't respect, you don't know what will happen tomorrow. That woman you are saying, she's not educated. I was supposed to marry that one, but I, I, I forced myself to this. You don't know what she carries in the future. A man left his wife for 17 years and he married a mistress because he said, this is a liability. She's asking everything from morning to evening. She's asking things. <laughs> She's a consumer. So she left. That woman was picked up by some white people. They took her into their shop to train her business. So she was working with those white people. They worked in Venda. They worked in Venda. When they left Venda, they left their shop with this woman. They said, for all these faithful years, we are giving you this shop. We are moving to Zani. Now she's the shop owner. That guy has went for a mistress. He left an illiterate woman who is a burden and a liability. From that one shop, the woman worked and that shop was spreading all over the country. She became a millionaire. That man was chased by a mistress somewhere down the line and he was now unmarried. After many years, then he comes and he sees many cars. He hears the empire. He can see that the woman has become a rich man. And he went and called one of the senior pastors in Vendor. Can you take me back to that woman? Which woman? Uh, the one I, 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 I left. Uh, why now? Uh, that one mistress. Uh, you know, my mother, my mistress. You know, they are, they are different. So I want to go to the mother of my children. She received back. After years, you are calling you an amin. Konaniyanga never, never undermine a person. As long as, chopeta, as long as they are still alive. They are marketing today. You don't know what will happen tomorrow. That woman has no money, but she has got a heart to build you. You wouldn't be where you are without that particular woman. Amen. Yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. You don't know what the future holds. So when you look at the people, see them in the spirit. Lift up your eyes. The Bible says Abraham lifted his eyes and he saw visitors passing. Adam saw them, but they didn't know that these are angels. The woman of Shunammah saw a pastor passing and she recognized him in the spirit. May you discover your wife and your men in the spirit. God will show you who is this man. He will show you their destiny. Now things are not... Now you are trying your level best to run things around. But I'm telling you as a man of God, stick to that woman. Stick to that man. And you will see what the future holds. I pray for the grace of multiplication. Your salary is small, but I prophetically speak upon that money. Let the money meet everything you need in that house. May you do big projects with a small fish as long as it's in the hands of Jesus. May it multiply. Hallelujah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Listen. This is number four. Uh, number one was with Isaac was busy meditating, he was praying. Number two, he, um, that woman came down, he had what? He had camel. Uh, number three, they lifted up their eyes. But listen to number four. This one you need to understand. Isaac took Rebecca into her mother's room. Let's talk. Isaac has his own room. But today, he relocates and goes to his mother's room with a new wife. What's going on? Why does he take a wife into his mother's room? Not his own room. Amen. Listen to this. Isaac managed to replace his mother by his wife. You missed it. Do you know that there are people who are married here? but they can't replace their mother. They are married, Mara. The mother is still in charge. They are married. The mother is in the village. The sisters are in the village. The brothers are in the village, but they are running the marriage by remote control. 
Every time they come to visit, it's a chaos because they are in charge. This man is failing one thing, to replace the mother by the wife. All his money are known by his sisters and his mother. All his policy documents are with his mother in the village. Why? Hey, pastor, hey, this man can kill me. I don't trust you. You, you, you. show you, she will destroy you. The Bible says for this reason, which reason? Reason of marriage. A man will live. Somebody say live. He will live and cleave. He will leave his father and mother and he will cleave to his what? To his wife. I am the product of what I'm talking about. I had many sisters and many brothers. Now I'm, I'm married. They, 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 they still want that access that they had on me before I was married. Sisters are coming to my room. They are asking me money. They are demanding. They are in charge. They want to go and buy groceries. I say, ho, ka, ho. There is another one here. So who is this one? Who is this one? We are in charge. It's our brother, this one. I must stand as a man and defend. Holy sisters, your time has expired. There is a, a woman here. You want to buy a car and you are asking your, your mother in the village, Mama, Mama, which one must I buy? That old woman, what diva guru lamke guru? Ni renge fortuna. Fortuna di mini, but lamke guru fortuna buy diva na. A man like you, but who put up such a camera? Atongo na la madeko, ango mbike la madeko. Zuma kuriwa la mkeko, kuriwa deba bike. My friend, you can't replace. You are not having the stamina to replace your mother by your wife. Am I talking to somebody here? Yeah. Replace her. Let her be in charge. Let her be in charge. You too, you have no problem. But the problem are the relatives and the in-laws. They are running your marriage. You see, in the village when you marry, the wife must wake up early in the morning. Even when she's not going anywhere, she must cook for everybody, warm water for everybody. I said, this one will sleep. What kind of a woman is I said, allow her to sleep. We are not going anywhere. No more, yes. Maraboni. In all the translation that I, I read, I love the translation that says, after putting her in his mother's room, he made her his wife. Uh, the one three, he, he, he married her, he became the husband. But I love the translation. He made her, he made her what? His wife. Now I understand. Brothers and sisters, wives are made and husbands are made. Your, your problem you want ever ready. God is giving you raw material, but you need to make a wife out of that man, out of that woman. You need to make a husband out of that what? Man. In that man, there is a husband. Make him. In that woman, there is a wife. Make her a wife. Hakonu faba tu zuliwa. Hahawe auliwi chitu. Kaba mkudiso faba ini zuliwa. Hakonu ambara. Kaba mkudiso ambara. Home to us in Azuambar, also Ambarabi, don't you know? I'm such a great kid. I'm a good so Ambar. But he's going to say Ambarimi, but I could end. Teach her. Problem, whatever Kotama, wait to Hunga, but Kotel is with a wavo. Ask of Hilly Sanziliko Fanny, Abaiti Wavo. If you want nice hairstyle, take her to the saloon. Make her mini car and pedicle. Take her to the restaurants. Take her to big shops. Let spoil that woman and make her to become the best thing you want. The same applies to Jesus. He loved the church and he washed it and he prepared it and he raised it to make it the church that is presentable. 
So nobody was born as well as a secondary as a university. When we are university, we are vendor for learning. Or we are pavement. An old man. I could drive. She could not show up on a university. 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 We are slaves to these things. When we are in the mall, we are just looking to other people's women. Yo, yo, yo. Mungana wanga, abaiti wabo. Oru nato rukata, rungandiva. Oko time was the 16 valve. That was Okata. Oko time was the 16 valve. Zone is also running one valve. Man, that's the time was 16 valve. close these things properly. The Bible says he loved her. He loved not she loved, he loved her. Look at this woman. If you want to see them glowing, if you want to see them alive, if you want to see them smiling, even when there is nothing in the fridge, love that woman, my friend. This woman, she never got told that no phone you are finished and clear. Gianni Corinne, you have done it. I want to hear the sisters of A, the amen of sisters. All they want is love. A practical love. They want to be sure that this guy loves me. The way I am. Some of them when they were married, they were not like this. They were slender like Coca-Cola bottle. But look at them today. Look at them today. I want a buffalo that I can move to. Come on, Funoraro. Funoraro. Unconditional. Unconditional love. Unconditional love. Unconditional love. If she's tired, I'm the one who made her tired. If she's big, I'm the one who made her big. Na <laughs> She wakes up in the night and looks at this guy. Is this the guy who married me? Una wana na gazui mera su zora lao. Tanobuzamtuanur <laughs> Let me leave the other things. And let me talk one thing and I'm done. Read that one. Genesis 26. 
Genesis 26. It was from verse what? Um, 6 to 10. Yeah, finish it. From 6. 26. Yeah. 26. Genesis 26. We read it. We're just closing with it again. So Isaac stayed in Gerar. Yeah. When the man of that place asked him about his wife, he said, she is my sister, because he was afraid to say, she is my wife. He thought, the man of this place might kill me on the account of Rebecca, because she is beautiful. When Isaac had been there a long time, yeah. Abimelech, king of the Philistines, looked down, looked down from a window and saw Isaac caressing his wife, Rebecca. No, no, no. L let me deal with that. When Abimelech Isaac said, it's not my wife, it's my sister. So one day Abimelech looked through the window and he saw Isaac caressing. Number one, right caressing. And I'm going to give you, I've dealt with more than 20 translations. I want to bring what other translations say on that aspect. The one he read says he was what? Caressing. Another one says he was laughing. Number two. Another one says he was playing. Another one says he was sporting. Something like doing games. Another one says he was dancing. How many do you have now? Five. Another one says he was hugging. How many do you have now? Another one says he was kissing. How many now? Now, the good news Bible says he was making love to his wife. It's number what? So you choose which one you want there. No matter whatever it is, the king said, Karazina Karazeva, it is. Amen. The king said he was lying. Sisters and brothers don't do what they are doing now. What were they doing? Kistes and Hakis. There are eight. Choose. All those things, that girl sitting next to you, was you thought that over him with a wound? I said, sisters who are sitting next to you, they are not going to be caressed. Number two, women wants to do what? Love. To be, Love to be hugged. The other translation said, Isaac was hugging Love. his wife. Women wants to, to Please. be kissed. Rokisanam chatoni achayanigi. This woman wants to be kissed. Another word, women wants to be what? To be played with. They, they, they want that, lock that room and make a wrestling with that girl, man. Wear her clothes in her high heel and start modeling in front of her. Play with her. Wear her underwears and stand. I think you know what I was going to ask. Wear her underwear. I was going to ask. Record him a BP card. Play with your mate. You are young, but you look like an old man in your marriage. Everything you are like a policeman. Bring my food. Switch off the light. Why? Why must I switch off the light? Hey, don't enter. I'm still bathing here. What do you want? Why are you living like an African man? Another thing. They want to be what? In love. They want to be made love. Makoto do you. Mwe deria huna. Deria huna. Uko wana bora ya usiku. 
And as he poro kusa basoni angi. Ait ni wana wamzi. Nda di kori hoyu mtu uya suma kori anga renga ndu anga pata maliwa warenga che adela chone mudini wabondi pasera aba mufi pasera zawe when you were talking here bang maria we were married for two years three years five years we were two that three five years why don't you do it every day why don't you do it every day? Why don't you do it every day? I think that comes from the platform of the pastors. Women are crying to us. They are crying to us. We 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 are why was I Jen? Come on, see a bottle of stuff. Why is there a pastor? Come on, what there is. Don't say I don't feel like feeling. We're not about talking about feelings here. Man needs it. Man demands it. Do it. Finish him. Even when he sees girls in the malls. Uto Sokoba says, Uto my turn. Uto Sokoba says, Mara, you finish him. Finish him. Finish him. Finish him. Finish his appetite. You are, you, you are building marriage. Sex was started by God. It is holy and it was initiated by God. Why is it like you are doing a, 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 a sin that was, was condoned? No. Switch off the lights. Hey. Come. Quick. Come. Because this guy is a player and a referee at the same time. So he will blow the whistle and the woman is saying, yo, 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 there is a game today. So when she's preparing herself, Brr, your child, I will, your child, got it. Hot game your Thomas, you know. Brrr. One, two, three. Brrr. Brrr. Hey. 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 As long as there are goalposts, they are ready to score. Amen. Now our marriages are so miserable. She sits down and thinks, sorry, for how long will I be in a process like this? For how long? We are praying, we are doing everything, but the devil is entering through this thing. Finish it. First Corinthians 7. It's part of this aspect. From verse 1. First Corinthians 7. Which version? Uh, any version. First Corinthians chapter 7 from verse number 1. Uh, I'm reading from the New King James. Okay. Can you go to the NLT or um, Amplified? Any one of those? NLT. Yeah. Now regarding the questions you asked in your letter. 
Yes, it is good to abstain from sexual relations. But because there is so much sexual immorality, each man should have his own wife. And each woman should have her own husband. The husband should fulfill his wife's sexual needs. And the wife should fulfill her husband's needs. The wife gives authority over her body to her husband. And the husband gives authority over his body to his wife. Do not deprive each other of sexual relations. <laughs> Don't deprive them. Monique, my parcela, I am. Monique, I know the video report for Monique. Monique. Come on, move. Come on, move. The man's in the door, but as much as all of you. Come on, move. To an avan, Navas, as the Varnabo, Haribacos, Cosme, Canyava, too. Have a go for you. Now they are quarreling with everybody on the way. If they are managers, whoever they are working, everybody's upside down. Because I won't go for you. We will talk one day, but I believe all these things Isaac was doing 2,000 or many, many years ago, a man did it to his wife. We are young in a new covenant. Why are we suffering like this? Give it to her. Give her money and come back to me to thank me later. Give it to her in the bedroom. Give her money and come back to me. Two things. Give her money and give it to her. You will see. You will see the smile. You will start to enjoy breakfast in bed for the first time. Women be inviting to us. Don't just wear those old pajamas and all those old bedroom. underwear As Shana Let us all stand on our feet. People were fighting, Pastor. They came to me. They said, the woman said, I'm here. Yeah, Pastor, uh, I, I can't give him another chance. So, I said, I'm paying for you the holiday to go to the Kruger National Park for three days. Don't, don't come on Sunday. Come during the evening. I don't want to see you in the church. You go on Friday, Saturday, Sunday. You come back with my money. I paid for everything. I said, when you come back, we're going to talk about this problem. Yeah. I said, when you are there, please don't talk about that problem. Wait for me when you come back. But go to the Kruger National Park first. So they came, I, I called them on Monday morning. I said, what, what is the time for appointment on Monday? They said, appointment for what? <laughs> appointment for what? I said, I told you, your problem is big. So I paid for your holiday. What time are we meeting on Monday? He said, meeting for what? Whatever, wh whatever you are thinking, we, it is sorted. We, we solved it there. 
at the Kruger National Park. They were tired. All they needed was time on themselves. All they needed was a date. All they needed was a refreshing time. All they need was togetherness. Yeah. They, they, they needed one another ring to be together without children, without friends. So they said it's sorted. We don't need any meeting anymore. That is what your wife is looking for. She can't, she can't speak it. I'm speaking for her. She, she wants to be taken for a restaurant once a year at least. She wants to be taken for a quality holiday without children. Where she's preparing your breakfast naked. You are only two. She's preparing your breakfast naked for you. Yeah, yeah. All women are doing like this. Yeah, 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 yeah. She, she wants to swim with you. She wants to dance with you. She, she, she just wants to be with you under closed doors. Even when you are not doing anything but with you. Oh, there are one. Leave the church, leave the businesses and concentrate on that, 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 that project. That woman is a project. Amen. But if you say it's time for prayer, concentrate on prayer. But if there is no prayer, what are you praying for? She wants to sleep. She wants my parcel. Rabba, ba, 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 ba. I, I, I hear something. I hear something. Ba, ba. Abadi tu chance la msa zuyo. Tu chance zuyo neba kweta zon. We are going to holiday to Cape Town. I'm taking books and Bibles. My wife said, where are these things going? I said, I can't, I can't separate. We, I said, I, no, no, no. I said, no, no, no. I said, no, no, no. I said, no, Abato says, I'm to worry quality time. Quality time. Heaven. 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 All she needs is a quality time with your man. Just to go for shopping with your man. Just to go to buy ice cream with your man. Quality time. Create that time. Now, my friend, your marriage is under attack in the spirit. The Lord told me that after this thing, let me lose your marriage in the spirit. Not in the physical. In the physical, you think it's sharp. But I know people hate you. People say, why is she married, not my daughter? Why, why must she carry a baby? Why is she enjoying like this? And most of the people are your relatives. His people. There was another woman they wanted for that man. Now it's you. And you don't have an altar. Yeah. You don't have an altar. We were ministering to a woman who got married. Five years, no baby. Five years, no baby. Prayers. You know, praying in capital letters, praying in small letters. Doing all spiritual gymnastics. Nothing is happening. Until God said, the error is on the wedding night. The maid of honor. The woman was the maid of... What do you call that woman? That woman was closer to the bride. Best lady. Yeah. She's the one who locked her friend. That night when she was undressing, that woman was taking all her clothes to the bag taking her clothes to the bag because she was dressing new things. And she took some of her underwear to an inyanga somewhere to say, how can my friend get married when I'm not married? Five years we are praying. We don't know where the problem is. The problem is with the best lady. Logged it! Your friend. Don't trust a man who breathes. Trust God, one a man. No people in the spirit. Some people, when they come to your house, let them end in the yard. Let there be demarcations. 
So when I'm on a match, they come out the bedroom, come out, they come out, they come out the bubble. Do you know these people? No people in the spirit. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Because altars are done in the spirit. That's why they destroy you in the spirit. And you don't know. All you are concentrating is kisses. You don't know what is happening in the altar. And the Lord told me to say, say, may you build an altar for that woman. I'm looking forward to see you getting old with that lady. Hallelujah. If you see my wife, you won't think she's 30 years in marriage. She still looks young and she's glowing. I saw them from this. You know her. You can't believe she's over 55. You can't believe it. God has kept her. Amen. Love will keep that woman young. Protect her with your life. Amen. I, I wonder why I married a thing. God give me mercy and grace to deal with this, this woman. What are you talking about? I feel like leaving you. I feel like committing suicide. I feel like committing divorce. Why are you talking those things? Do you know that life and death is in the power of your tongue? Speak good things in the middle of rubbish. Prophesy upon your wife that she won't die a barren. She will carry a baby like Isaac. Pray for your wife. Things you cannot change, ask God to deal with her. And he will deal with her. Oh. We're going to pray all of us. I believe I was touching some people's cons. Say, Lord, help me to be a good husband, to be a good wife. Amen. Help me. Help me to help my woman to be the best out of her. Lift up your hands in the name of the Lord. Close your eyes and lift up your hands. I will lead you with this prayer. And after this, I'm giving you time to pray. Woman, when coming to the spirit, things of the spirit, you are one flesh. You are not one spirit. Pray like you are not married. Pray. Do it with all passion to say, I don't want to miss heaven because of this marriage. I don't want to, to lose my children because of this marriage. If he does not fast, I will fast. If he does not want to go to church, I will go to the church. Amen. Yes, or in the second year, the leader in the leader in any of Magazine and Banavan. I am to no commodity, Udo, Udo Faini, and at the Saraka Pandanami Hari Hari Awe. The leader in Urim Zimu give me the grace to survive. I can't change this man. His mother couldn't change him, and I can't change him as well. God change him. Change him, Lord. Say, Lord Jesus. Thank you for coming to this occasion. You spoke to my heart. I thank you for the marriage you gave me. I thank you for the man you gave me as a husband. I thank you for the woman you gave me as a wife. I pray today, help me to build an altar. For this marriage, this marriage will not fail. This marriage will survive all the storms of life. I pray for my marriage. I pray for my children. Make a boundary. Make a hedge around my family. Deep my family in the blood of your son. Protect us by the fire of the Holy Ghost. Use me to be a builder. Use me to be a peacemaker. Use me to build an altar. I believe in this marriage. I believe in my children and the future is bright in the name of Jesus. I receive it by faith. My marriage will survive. 
my marriage will make it. I cancel divorce. I cancel sicknesses. I cancel unfaithfulness. I cancel poverty. I cancel depression. In the name of Jesus. So shall it be. In Jesus name. It is your time to pray now. Come on, continue with this prayer. You are an intercessor. You are an intercessor. Pray now. Pray, pray, pray. If you possible, hold hands to your wife. Hold hands to your wife and pray. Hold hands to your wife and pray. Hold hands to your wife and pray. Come on, Tabel. Everybody in this house, you are praying. Yes, my God. I pray for Yes, oh God, yes, oh God. Mama Makoro Robo Shaka take him. Yes, we break evil covenants. Yes, we break evil altars. We break every altar in the name of Jesus. Raka reke seke roko siaka teke rebo siende reke shieke teke rebo siende. Yes, oh God, we thank. Every altar that is coming we break every altar that is coming against our marriage. Every altar that is coming against our children. Every altar that is coming against our health. My corrobosiak, we destroy those altars by the blood of Jesus. We build new altars, altars of God, altars of God. Of an oka kete kereboshiak. Yes, our marriage will stand. Yes, oh God. Mama Makoro, the future is brighter. The future is brighter. In the name of Jesus. Mama Makoto Koroboshanda. In the name of Jesus. We speak uh, life, life of our marriages, of our marriages, oh God. In the name of Jesus, Mama Korobosike, no weapon formed against our marriage shall prosper. In the name of Jesus, Rakoto Korobosika, Reke Teke Reboshen de Reboseke. In the name of Jesus, we thank you. We give you all the praise. Yes, we give oh you all the worship. Yes. Sisters, we yes. Our marriages will yes. leave. Yes. will run away. Yes. We will run away. Yes. We will, we will not die. Yes. In the name of Jesus. Yes. yes. Oh. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father, Lord. Father, we thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we bless you. Mm. Father, we give you the glory. Mm. Father, we celebrate you. We oppose every altar against our yes, marriages. Father. We bend them down. Mm. Let them catch the fire of the Holy Ghost. Mm. Our marriages will succeed. Yes. Our marriages are permanent. Yeah. You said you are God, you hate divorce. Yes. Father, we stand in the name of Jesus. Yes. We pray marriage, this marriage will not fall in our hands. Yeah. Will not fall in our time. Mm. In Jesus' name. Father, we bless you. Father, we bless you. The Bible says two are better than one. Yeah. My friend, we are not talking about money. We are talking about spiritual ties. It says two are better than one. Amen. You are going far with your wife. Yeah. I said you are going far with your husband. Amen. Yeah. I'm looking forward to see grace of God walking with you all throughout all the storms of life. Thank you for the leadership. Thank you for the organizers. Covenants couples, we shall survive. We will live. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. If you can hug your spouse, if you can kiss your spouse, if you can celebrate your spouse and say, God is God.
God is good. 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 This is, this is what God wants. This is what God wants. Amen. So in the altar, remind one another of what you heard. Don't judge one another. Remind one another. And teach one another. And have patience with one another. Some of the things cannot happen overnight. But we are on the way. Apostle, Pastor. Change my character. My character. Lord, I pray, change my character, Lord, change my character. Lord, I pray, change my character. I want you to hold your spouse and close your eyes. You know, as the servant of God was ministering here, Sometimes we didn't even want to look at each other because it's like he was in our bedrooms. It was like he was in our, at our homes. It's like he knew what we were dealing with. But after we have learned this, he said, when you go home, it's not time to condemn each other. It's a time to help each other, to be patient with, with each other. But maybe you need to pray and say to God, change my character. Change my character. Care, Lord, I pray, change my care, Lord. is a calling and you accepted the call and you are into that ministry God, which God has entrusted you so that you can raise God fearing children so that you can be an example to the world tonight after listening to wow we laughed but we were convicted look at your spouse and say I want to make this covenant with you Repeat after me, say it. Look at them and say, I want to make this covenant with you. I will be a better steward of this ministry that God gave us. You may be seated. Can we give God a big hand of praise? <laughs> Hallelujah. Pastor Joyce, uh, I need direction of that side. Yes, quickly. Um... Who he said, look at your person and say, wow. Wasn't that beautiful? I, I don't know when last time I laughed like that. I haven't laughed like this in a long time. Maybe because I've been sick for such a long time. But today I feel so light. I was laughing, la like laughing. But this was awesome. Can we just appreciate the servant of God? Wow. Um, 
we, we, oh, he's not here. Oh, okay. But uh, some of you, you'll remember that we used to be called restoration couples. RCCI, restored couples. But as I was praying, God said the name of this department must change. It must be covenant couples. We don't want you to keep on being restored and restored. You make mistakes, you must be restored all the time. Every evening, I'm sorry, I will change, I'll do better. No, we are changing. We are now called covenant couples. Amen. You know, I'm thinking of, I think it's Proverbs 30, verse 1. Someone open it for me. can't remember what that's 30. Proverbs 31 of Proverbs 30, verse 1. Yes, that's the one I'm looking for. Pastor D, if you have it. Hey. It can be. The sayings of Agar's son. Uh, uh, I'm not looking for that one. The one which says, I have made a covenant with mine eyes. Google it. Or chat, chat, chat G, 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 P, it. I have made a covenant with my eyes. Job oh, 31. Job 31. Yes, Job 31. Yes. Read it. Which version? Uh, just read it. I'll tell you to keep looking. Uh, Job 31, verse 1. Can we all stand? I think this one we need to say it when we're standing. We are covenant couples now. Yeah. Eh. Say it. I'm sorry, I'm just. Um, Job 31 verse 1 uh -huh. NLT I have made a covenant with my eyes Let's say, let's repeat after Dumile Pastor D I have made a covenant with my eyes I have made a covenant with my eyes Not to look with lust Not to look with lust At a young woman At a young woman There's another one which says I have made a covenant with my eyes not to look at a woman with lustful eyes. That's the one I want. And the, the ladies must say, because it's not only the men who look at others with lustful eyes. NIV. Yes. I have made a covenant with my eyes. I have made a covenant with my eyes. Not to look lustfully at a young woman. Lustfully at an... Okay, it's fine. But that's not the one I want. There's a version I'm looking for. I have made a covenant with my eyes, Pastor Ndoki, not to look at a woman with lustful eyes. We used to, to, to say this. Oh, we, I was saying that with our young people. You can't find it. It's okay. All right. Let's say it for the last time. Any other version? Read it for us. Yes, just read it for us again so that we say it for the last time. I have made a covenant with my eyes. I have made a covenant with my eyes. Not to look lustfully. Not to look lustfully. At a young woman. At a young woman. Yeah, all right. For us, we say at a man or at a woman. Amen. You may be seated. You can looking, you can do what? You can look. Looking, you can do what? Because God has given you eyes. But you must not look how? Lustfully. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So without any waste of time, we want to say to... I was still saying, uh, well, Apostle, uh, when you were gone to the other side, that our department used to be called Restored Couples. So I said, as I was praying during this period of time when I was not at church for a long time, the Lord gave me a new name for this department. This is the first time we are using it to be called covenant couples. So we must have covenants. We must tell ourselves, I am here. Uh, I think I don't want to <laughs> <laughs> I'm here forever, whether you like it or not. You know, I, I, I watch something on these TikToks and all that. So this... Um, Guy said to the wife, you know, I'm, I'm tired of you. I'm leaving. And he's busy packing his bags. And the wife went and packed the bags. And as he was going, he said, so which, where are we moving to? 
She's following him. She said, where you go, I go. Your people are my people. Your God is my God. Amen. He said, no, if you are going, you must tell me where we are going. Hallelujah. But I don't want to repeat anything that he has said, but wow. Can we just appreciate the servant of God? <laughs> ha, I think, just say to your, to, your, to your person to be continued. Hi, this must be, must be what? Hi, before the year is over, he's coming back. I think we need a whole weekend. Uri, so that we can also have practicals, you know. <laughs> there must be a practical session, you know. We need a weekend out. How many of you want to go out? Yeah, I think. What's what? What's what? The Siwadas, the next session, Apostle TP is coming, and then he will teach us, and then he will say, I'm giving you homework, and then you have an assignment, and we all go and do assignments, and then the following day we'll come and give feedback. Yeah. Is that okay? Yeah. yeah. Apostle, we will let you know on time. I know. This stuff, Hallelujah. Blessed be. We are so, we are so blessed. We have learned a lot, and I'm not going to waste time. So thank you so much for all of you. I know we start, we know you, we know that I know we started late, and some of you, you were here on time, but this was worthwhile. Yeah. I mean, you could have been rushing to go home to go and fight, but here we're receiving stuff. You know, wow, your story. But we were here in the presence of God, and God was speaking to us through his servant. Wasn't this beautiful? Amen. We were repenting. So I really thank you so much, servant of God, for giving, pouring out your heart. He spoke like a father, isn't it? Amen. So go home uh, and uh, make sure you go and practice, especially the one which says your body is not yours. You understand? You don't control your body. Tonight, it must be practiced. Tomorrow when you see me in Sokor, Zaba, Zoruga, Nazanga, Zoruga, Barmini, Zamina, Zifamba, so. This is all out of my children, Sokor, Mini, Zifamba, so. This is all out of my Mini. Hi, Mami. I will know you had practicals tonight. Tomorrow when I don't see this, I'm going to be saying, what were you learning? Amen. Hallelujah. But we don't want to waste time. It's been long. We have not eaten. So I'm going to ask our deacon here, deacon Mabatu, our chief. Um, deacon Mabatu, you should be coming. When we see you with aprons, we get happy. You know, she was in the kitchen all this time. Media team, we want to say thank you so much. I'm sure you were also learning when you grow up, when you get married, you have been a ushers. Hey, most of you, you are young people, but you were hearing things. When you grow up, you will practice those things. Thank you so much for taking your time. I know you could have been doing other things. Hey, Pastor Rose, where's Pastor Rose? Is she still here? Hey, Pastor Rose from Arose is the one who did the whole deco. Can we appreciate her? And everything is in-house, you know. And then um, the flowers, all the flowers ta from Tato Flowers. Please stand up, Tato Flowers, the both of you. Yes. Every time when we have an event at church, they make sure that they do all the flowers you see here is from Tato Flowers. What else uh, have I left out? Oh, the, the, the camera crew and all that is my, our son. Where is our son? Where is Shaolin? If you have an event, come this side, come. They must see you as well, run. Or is it gone now? All right. Hey, when you have an event and you want photography, my, our son does photography as well. So you're going to get those beautiful photos. Media team, Sishi and your team, thank you so much. And then the sound desk, I know you were also working. Thank you so much. May the Lord richly bless you. I know tomorrow is another day, but without any waste of time, let's appreciate Deacon Mabatu as she's going to tell us our eating arrangements. Thank you, Mami. Uh, greetings, uh, covenant couples. Amen. I greet you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Uh, how are we going to eat? It's uh, our pastor, Pastor Audrey, is going to take our, the guest speaker together with the people that 
together with his entrage, and then they're going to eat on the, they're going to serve dish on the left side, of, on my left side, and then they will be followed by the pastors, they will be followed by mommy and daddy, and then the pastors, and then the rest of us will dish on my right side. And when we dish, can we please be considerate of the next person coming to dish afterwards? Thank you so much. Please enjoy. Yes. Okay. We are going to ask um, who is a pastor here? Um, well, Mekaribe, can you please come and pray for the food? Dikentaki. Arabere. Tina Laiso Christo and Nazareth are the Pandash Patocha, one year over, rich cool river, Dubalot, Leravan, Nabon, Mzimosh, which corrected the Delta, Babarco, or Lazazino, Mzimosh, Cabayo, Patches, as Luazo Tesne, Raquio Zilla, Zuri Patervena, Mibilio Tacarao, Richi Vapa, now Chimbila, Chimbila, Javu, the Mzimosh, the Bonazica Machirash. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Uh, Pastor Francis, please come. He's going to pray for traveling messes. Miley, come and interpret quickly what I want him to pray for. I forgot. Uh, he's going to pray for traveling messes when we drive and go different places. Ask him to pray. Tell him. Amen. Amen. She French chafa na chivenda. Those kosko fi sira rayaga. Ugo fu sira rezwa. Hey, ba kwa borini sira rezwa. Those kosko fi sira rayaga. No zifati. He kept repeating that. I'm sure those kwa borini muzimuba ri sira rez, sira re, sira rez, sira rayaga. All right, Pastor. Let's get a song hey, at the back. Pastor Audrey, take table one, and all the other pastors, please follow table one. Let's get a song and let's be talking with each other there. We are done for. It's like you want us to continue. <laughs>